Amen. Amen. We're going to go on and get started here tonight and thank you all for being here. And I know everybody here, you know, we all have hope into something, right? Yep. Even when I was in my addiction and I had no hope, I still tried to hope for something, but I found myself hoping for material things and what the world could do for me and what money could do for me and what I could do for myself. But I forgot the most important thing about hope. God is my hope. Amen. And I want to let you know here tonight that if you don't have God as your hope and that you are walking around trying to put your hope and trust in everything else in the world, then you're going to be like a bush in the desert. Amen. Amen. You think about that bush in the desert, and it's going to talk about that here in a second. Of how it compares a tree that's living by the side of a river or a branch. And it's constantly got water, and that water is soaking up in the roots of that tree. Well, that true, that tr true uh, uh, soaked tree is going to produce fruit. But that old bush in the desert, it's going to whittle and die and be good for nothing. And I want to be that, that tree that grows on the side of a river, amen. amen? I want to be the one that's watered and nurtured, and I want to put all my trust and hope, <laughs> amen? I don't want my hope going in the old things that I used to trust. See, here's my thing. When I come up here on Tuesday nights and I, I could tell y'all all kind of things of what happened in the world this week. I could tell you what, what things that happened that made me feel good. But what I want to specify tonight is what God has done for me this week. Amen. And that God has made me smile this week. Sometimes my life gets hard, amen. And I know you're sitting here today and your life gets hard. Maybe some of y'all out here, it's thought about sometime or another of giving up and going back home and not going through the process of rehab or recovery. Maybe you're just down on yourself and maybe you need to focus today and kind of like draw close to God and, and just ask God to uh, come in your heart and teach you how to have a better life. Think about the world versus God. God made this world. He formed this world. He gave us everything we need in this world. So why would we need anything else other than what God has made available for us right now? And I think about his son, Jesus, as Jesus went to that cross at Calvary and he gave his life for you and I. He took upon the sins of the whole world who had none. See, Jesus didn't have any sins, but he had to take upon my sins, your sins, whoever called upon his name and asked him to come in their heart. He died for their sins. And I'm thankful today because that's where my hope lies. It lies at the cross of Calvary through Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Amen? Amen. My hope is there on what Jesus did at the cross. And that's his life, his blood that he shed for you and I. Anything else that we're searching in the world to make us happy, we're wasting our time. Amen? Amen. We're, we're blowing in the wind and getting nowhere. We're living a life of insanity because we're trying to make ourselves happy through everything we can but Christ. But see, Christ has given all of us a way to be happy. He's given us a way to be free. He's given us a way to stop our life and start over and give our life to Him and repent and to turn away from the way we've been living. And He also pours the Holy Spirit within us that lives and dwells in these bodies right here that gives us the power to say no here tonight. It gives us the power to wake up tomorrow and say, I'm not going to use today because my hope lies in Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm not going to keep going around worried about tomorrow, worried about what I did yesterday, because I know where my true hope comes from today, and that's the Lord. That's right. You see, so many times we get hung up because we live in a fast-paced world now. We live a fast-paced lifestyle. We're so used to getting everything right now that sometimes it affects us and our walk with God. But see, God does not work as fast as the microwave. Now, if it's God's will to give you what you want, then God will give it to you. But I want you to know here tonight that if it's God's will for you to wait patiently and keep putting on, then God knows best for your life. That's right. So if we'll learn to stop and we'll uh, learn to slow down and just stop and listen to God and let God's will be done in our life, we will see God work in our life. Amen. But if you continue to run, and continue to thank every man, thank every woman, and everything in this world, then there's no way you're going to see God work because you're taking the work out of God's hands That's and right. you're trying to make it happen in your hands. That's right. So we need to be very careful of where we have our hope at today. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I truly believe here today, and I'll be lying if I told you, money will make me happy. I know money makes you happy, right? Mm -hmm. 
It seems like the more money we got, the more we want, right? We can never be satisfied. I, I, I've read things on TV about people who win a million dollars or, or all this money, and to find out six months down the road they've committed suicide or they are unhappy, and they will tell you that money couldn't buy my true happiness. Right. And these people who want all this money, they truly said that, you know, I thought this would make me happy. I thought this would put me and my wife back together. I thought it would make my kids happy, but I found out it separated me from my kids. My kids didn't care about eating no more. They didn't care about spending time with us. All they cared about is going out here and buying stuff and living a good life. See, that's what I'm trying to illustrate here tonight, and Jeremiah's going to break it down a lot better than I can. So let's go on and get started on that. But it's coming out of Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 1 through 14, but I'm going to focus on 5 and 8 tonight. And I'm going to read a paraphrase before I get down to that. It says, we may have learned a long time ago that hoping only brings disappointment. Amen? Our hopes were dashed. The promises we believed were broken. We were left feeling like fools for every, for every hoping, ever hoping in the first place. Let me just stop right there and ask you, have y'all ever been where this uh, is talking about in this paragraph? We may have learned a long time ago that hoping only brings disappointment. Mm -hmm. Well, why does hoping bring disappointment? Because we have our hope in the wrong area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we talked about that earlier. And I love what this says. It says, our hopes were dashed. The promises we believed were broken. Now, you know, as I first got clean, I prayed to God. And I'm going to be honest tonight. I prayed to God for a lot of stuff that I knew Jamie didn't need. Amen? Amen. I spent all my time trying to find ways of how I could get those things. And I kept going and kept going and God never gave me what I prayed for. He never gave me what I asked for. And you know, a little over 10 years now, I'm looking back, and I have to praise God today. I have to thank God for not giving me what I wanted a little over 10 years ago. Amen. Because if He had gave me what Jamie wanted, then I wouldn't be happy and I wouldn't be free today. I would be back doing the same things that caused me to be unhappy. Mm. So I have to stop and think today that maybe promises were broken. Or maybe things didn't go our way. Or maybe it's just the very fact that God knows best for our lives. Mm -hmm. That God understands what you wish for or what you pray for is going to bring you harm in your life. So God will turn around and make things a little uneasy in your life so that you can really see the true meaning of what He needs to give you. Mm -hmm. See, we all, we all want to have a good life, a happy life. And there's nothing wrong with none of us having hope today. Every one of us should strive to do better in our life. We should want more things for our family and kids. We should want a better job. In our recovery, we ought to want to see ourselves getting better. And God puts people in this world. He uses things to give us what we want or to teach us. We have the Word of God here, which is uh, the Bible, that teaches us everything we need to know about living a good life. Amen. But sometimes that little stuff like that in somebody's mind may not be good enough for them because they are looking for bigger and faster things. If you don't get anything else out of what I'm saying tonight, just be patient and wait on the Lord. That the Lord knows best for y'all's life. He knows best for mine. And if I had acted on the things that I wanted years ago, trust me when I say this, I would not be back here today. I just thank God. I'm giving my gratitude tonight and I'm thanking Him for putting me where He knows that I need to be. We were left feeling like fools forever hoping in the first place. But perhaps we were devastated because we put our hope in the wrong place. Amen? Amen. Can anybody here agree with that tonight? Yes. That maybe today, maybe right now, maybe you, you might have your hope in the wrong place. Amen? I pray tonight that we will all figure that out tonight. And if we do hope in the wrong things, that maybe tonight God will make it available to us to understand where our hope belongs. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere human, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. Amen? Amen. I've been there. I can say I've been there. I can say sometimes today 
Well, Jamie, you know you're human and you see other people, the way they live and the way they get things and stuff. You know, I ain't going to lie today. A part of me wants to, to live like that and part of me wants to not really uh, understand why I need things and I know God wants me to have better. But I've learned a long time ago, y'all. I've learned. I used to be one of those that had to be happy. I was miserable if I didn't have things I wanted. But I've learned today. And if you can only get to this point in your life that where you are happy with nothing, that you will really draw closer to God. Because I found out when I had nothing, I drew closer to God than when I had something. And when I found out about the gift of salvation, or how Jesus Christ loves me, and that I can receive that gift, and all I had to do was to admit I'm a sinner, to give my heart to Jesus Christ, make Him Lord of my life, know that He went to the cross, know He died, He was buried, and He rose on the third day. I found out after all that how free I was when I made that decision to follow Christ. And I really found out that time where my hope is at. And how good God is and what He has done and the sacrifice He has made in my life. And I really looked at my life at that point. And I said, Jamie, you're wishing for a lot of things that's not good for you. And I've learned to sit still. I've learned to let God work in my life. I've learned to love God. I've learned to let God change my ways, my desires, my wants. I learned to be satisfied. I want to tell y'all a short little story here tonight. Me and my wife, we just recently built a porch. And we struggled and struggled over the years. And we've been on the porch. We'll be married going on 22, 23 years next month. And I was thinking, well, Shannon, we always wanted a porch, but we were always scared to make a move to do it. Because we were scared if we got in the bind, we wouldn't be able to pay for it. But anyway, we prayed about it. But every little step of the way, God has sent somebody to help us with that porch. We went down to her cousin's last night. She called, and he does a type of landscaping. Well, he had some extra stones left over, some slate stones. And I've been wanting to make a, a sidewalk coming from the front porch steps out into the yard. Well, you know God made it available when I went down there. The man didn't want anything for it. Amen. I want to tell you here tonight, when you get an attitude, amen, that you trust in God for your wants, amen. and you trust in Him and, uh, alone, God will show you some things that will blow your mind. You might be sitting there tonight and say, well, what's the big deal about some stones? It's a big deal to me because I priced those stones and they're expensive. And I know that Jane and Shannon, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had to have, we wouldn't have had that uh, walkway if it hadn't been for God putting on that man's heart to allow us to have the rocks. Amen. That's right. That's right. We could have just put gravel down and had a little wood walkway that wouldn't have looked good. But God wanted more for my life because I trusted in God to give it to me. Amen. amen. And it ain't nothing amen. wrong with bragging on that. Amen. So I'm proud today over a stone. I'm proud over those stones we got last amen. night. I come home last night and I told my wife, I said, I'm more happier over those 15 to 18 stones than I would be if somebody gave me $500. Amen? Because if you price those rocks, it's way over $500. <laughs> That's right. So now we get the uh, walkway that we always wanted, but I've got to put the work in to build it. Amen? Amen? But thank God today, if I use my life, then God's going to uh, honor me for that, and He's going to give me what I need to finish my porch. That's right. And that the way it is in our life. That's where our hope should be tonight. Your hope should be is, I'm going to trust in God, I'm going to give Him my life and do everything I can to please Him and to walk with Him and to trust Him. And I'm going to, please, I'm going to be pleased in my life whether I get nothing or a lot. Right. And when you can be happy with nothing, you'll find yourself having a relationship with Christ. Almighty God, amen, that you've never had before. You will see God start doing little stuff and you just put a smirk on your face and you say, Lord, I know that's from you. It's only from you, God, because I know all my life, I've been trying to do everything I can to get what Jamie wanted. And when I stop and I listen and I slow down and I let God intervene in my life, everything has gone so much smoother since I admit it where my hope lies. Yes, my recovery has been good. I've never had a want. Amen. Me and my wife is not this uh, rich family and get everything we want. We work hard with what we got. But we also honor God and we depend on our God. And in our household, we do serve God. Amen. We put God first in our house before we put ourselves. Right. Shannon's going to have God in her life first before mine. 
I'm going to come second because we keep God center of our house and we focus on God alone. And I know God has blessed me and my wife over the years because we have honored God and give Him thanks. And, and He has given us His glory and shined down blessings on our life. But they are like, listen right here. Now this right here is tough. You got it on the board. Yeah. And, and, and see, Jeremiah is getting ready to compare here for a second of somebody who wants from the world, but he's also a compare of, of somebody who is gracious and rooted deep and, and has God and dependent on God. But it says, this is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength, and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. Mm. They will live in the barren wilderness in a unhabited, habitated, salty land. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those that have put their hope in the Lord. That's what I'm trying to tell you here tonight. When I come out here on Tuesday nights, it ain't about Jamie getting up here. A lot of people in this community won't even know that Jamie is even involved in the things I do. You want to know why? Because I don't want people to see Jamie. I don't want people to see what I do. I, I don't care about what I do because my trust goes in the Lord and I want the Lord to get all recognition through anything I do. See, that's all about having your hope in the right place. Because once you get your hope in the right place, it's going to give you that peace and instillment in your mind to know that God is in charge. That God is the only one that gets the glory. Amen? I've tried to shine my life all my life. I stopped doing that. Because when people see me, I don't want them to see Jamie. I want them to see Christ. Amen. I want them to see somebody who's really in tune into the Lord. Amen? Amen. That has really given their life and not concerned about a recognition or a pat on the back or anything like that. Amen? Right. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea that I'm trying to tell you that it's not good to brag. Amen? It's good to let people notice that you have done a good job. It's good to have your boss at the end of the day to come and pat you on your back and say, Well done, Jamie. Well done, Tristan. Well done, Jay. It's, it's, it's good to have that recognition. But you should never ever recognize, uh, recognize that it's the only recognition. See, see, God, that's the God we serve. We serve a loving God. Amen? They, they gave His Son Jesus to die at the cross for all of us here. Whoever will call upon His name. Amen? And all my credit goes to the Lord. That's where everything goes here today. And, and, and I've learned not to take credit. I've learned it. I don't even want nobody to mention my name about nothing I've done. But if they do, that's okay. But I want the purpose to be of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Y'all understand where I'm coming from tonight? Amen. Yes, they are like trees planted along a river bank with the roots that reach deep into the water. Now this is going into the other illustration of what's good. In other words, they are like trees, the roots that reach deep into the water. Y'all understand uh, a desert is dry. Very, very little rain. So if this comparison don't get you to thinking here, all right, you take a desert that's dry, but you have a root that's going deep in the side of a river bank where it's constantly flow of water. You got all the nutrients and it's producing good fruit and stuff. Which one would you choose here today? Would you want to be that old dried up bush that, that's barely surviving, that's breaking down and the sun is being down? Or do you want to be that person who, whose life is in tune with God and that your trust is with God, your hopes with God, and that you have God watering you, amen? That you have Him taking care of you and, and loving on you. That's where I want to be today because I lived enough of my life in my addiction where it's that, it's that uh, thing in the desert, amen? I lived a love of, love enough of my life as being that dried up plant in the desert. I'm getting tired of being that dried up plant. Amen. And I made a decision today. Guess what, Jamie? You've got to get your hope right so you can get out of that desert. That you can get in that river bank and that you can really see what it's like to live for God. Right. And once I found out what it's like to live for God, and I knew that He could nurture me and take care of me and wash all my sins and, and love on me, amen, I found that brand new life. 
I found a new life, and that's because of Christ Jesus. Amen. But listen, it says, such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months or of drought. Their leaves stay green, and they never stop producing fruit. And that's Jeremiah 17, 5 through 8. And I'm going to go back and read those scriptures because some of this is paraphrasing, and I want to go back and read the true scripture and the true word of God at the end of this so that we can let the word of God speak to us and teach us and the Holy Spirit to move and do his job. Amen? Amen. But it says on the next paragraph, turning our life over to God means, means placing our hope and confidence in him instead of people. Let me tell you something about people. We have some good people in this world. There's some good people in here. All of y'all are good people. I'm good. But guess what I do? I let you down. You're going to let somebody down. The world will let all of us down. So we can't, we can't put all our eggs in one basket and depend on man or woman because man or woman will always let you down. No matter how good attention somebody's got, sometimes the promise is always broken. And that leaves us with broken trust. You know, I, I love all y'all here, and I would trust anybody here with my life. But let's face it. I know God's got a better authority over my life than anybody. Amen? Because Amen. God has the power to do so. Man and woman don't have that power, but I know God does. And I depend on God to get me through. I depend on God to feed me, to love me, to teach me, to keep my household uh, paid up and my gas in my car. I depend on God for all that. I do not depend on man, amen, because God is behind every good job. God is behind every car you drive. God is the reason that we have everything we got. Amen. And it's hard for people to understand that because they can't physically see God give you the money. They can't physically see God heal you. They can't physically see and understand these things because they can't see it. But I'm telling you here today, if we could just see the work that God does, it would change everybody in here. Because we would see God's mighty hand walking on top of us and, 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 and just walking like a mama chick uh, follows the babies, amen? And I think about that today, how good God is and what He has done in my addiction and my recovery life and the people He has put in my life. And I know I'm ranting on tonight. I know I'm going weird left field and back to right field. I understand that. But I'm just telling y'all here tonight, I'm so excited because I want somebody to know God like I know Him. Amen? Amen. And all you got to do is just know Him. Get to know Him. And that starts with a personal relationship with Him. That starts with a commitment of wanting to know who Christ is and to live for Christ and know that Christ is gain. Amen? Amen. Praise God for that. Praise God. But turning our life over to God means placing our hope and confidence in Him instead of people. Who will disappoint us? Will we place all our hope and trust in other people? It is like expecting a tree to flourish in a barren desert. People will disappoint us and are unable to satisfy our deepest needs. Amen? Amen. I bet you I can feel people thinking that now. You're probably thinking back, yeah. I thought that person was going to help me and give me things, and that person never come through. Amen? How many times has somebody ever told you something in life, and it went months and months, and you never heard from them again? You never saw them again. You're like, man, they just disappeared off the uh, face of the earth. But that's how we human folks are, amen? amen? We can't keep our promises, but God is one who cannot lie. God is going to follow through with everything God is going to do. But you know, I think about us. What are we doing to allow God to for us to depend on Him? It first starts with that free commitment that Jesus gave us at the cross of Calvary. And that's accepting that salvation that Jesus has offered all of us here. Making things right with God and understanding that you can be a lot richer with Christ than you can with this world. You can be a lot free. Your heart will just run over sometimes the love that God can pour in that thing. Trust in God changes everything. Jesus said, the water I give, and let's, let's hold on for a second. This scripture, I think, is going to come out of John 14. I mean, John 4, verses 14. It says, trusting God changes everything. Now, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, the water I give become a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. 
Amen. Amen. Don't you want that water that Jesus can give you? Amen. I'm telling you here tonight, if you're running and you, you need to stop searching here tonight because I'm going to save you a lot of running, a lot of pain, and a lot of hurt. If you just understand tonight that you don't have to continue to run, that you don't have to hide from God, that you, you just need to slow down and depend on God here tonight, Amen. and God Amen. will give you a new life. Yes, sir. It's so hard for people to understand that. A lot of people say, man, I'm too broken. I've been in some messed up stuff in my addiction. I got out of church. I got in some wicked stuff that, that I shouldn't have been in. But I'm telling you tonight, nothing overpowers Christ. That's right. It's Amen. nothing. Even the darkness hides from Christ. Amen. Christ is the light. Amen. Amen. And He will bring everything out of the darkness. Yes. You shouldn't be afraid of evil things. You shouldn't be afraid of evil people. Because God is overpowering. Amen. 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 God is the uh, beginning. He's the last. He's everything. He's Alpha Omega. Amen. Yes, He is. Yes, He, he is. is God. Amen. Yes. And I, that's my hope is in God. And if I don't get nothing else out of my life from this day forward, if I only get death tomorrow, I'm pleased with my life with Christ. Amen. That I've done everything I could to uh, bring Him glory. That I've, that I've showed my life and that I never give up giving the gospel. I always talked about the cross. I talked about salvation as love. Amen. That's what it's all about today. And I pray here today that y'all enjoy this tonight. And I pray that you got something out of it. But please, if you ever come in here, you know, I, I talk about burning desire sometimes. A lot of people say, well, what is a burning desire? It's not just talking about your problems. You see, a lot of people walk around with stuff that's really hurting them. And see, it might be somebody watching tonight. It might be somebody here. I don't know. You know, I've been down this road before, and I don't know why the Holy Spirit is having me to bring this up. Maybe, maybe he knows somebody needs to hear this. But you know, I've been in my life to where I wanted to die, right? Y'all heard me talk about that. I talked about how I went to God and wished God would kill me in my next fix. I prayed to God for Him to not let me wake up in my sleep so it would be comfortable and I wouldn't have to suffer. I prayed for a lot of bad things in my life. But I am thankful here tonight that God didn't answer them prayers. Amen. Because I know where I'd have been. And it just, I'm telling you here tonight, I am blessed to be here. Yes, After all the things that I've done to God and turned my back, it's still hope for y'all, amen. Don't give up on your recovery. Don't give up on life because as long as you can breathe, God can make things happen. Right. Amen. And I thank God today that if I stop breathing today, if I stop breathing right now, I know where I'm going, amen. 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 This is not my home. This is just my temporary way through. Amen. 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 Well, we deserve a lot better tonight than what we uh, offer ourselves. <coughs> Think about that hope I talked about at the beginning. Think about how uh, in Jeremiah it compared that old that old bush drying up in the desert, and it compared it with that uh, that root going deep in the ground beside a spring or a river. You think about those two comparisons. Maybe God is trying to tell somebody here tonight: it's time for you to uproot where you at and come on over here where it's good. And to get your life right and to, and to draw close to Christ. Amen. Says, and this is going to finish it up. When our hope is in God, wait a minute. When our hope is in God and our life is His care, we are sustained when we otherwise would be devastated. Amen. Amen. Y'all, have y'all ever felt like that? Devastated? Amen. That's an awful word right there, devastated. Yes, because once you feel devastated, you feel like your hopes and dreams and everything you wish for is gone. gone. But I want to tell every one of y'all tonight, you might be from another city, you might be from another small town, maybe you're separated miles from your family, and maybe you're in rehab or wherever you're at tonight. Maybe maybe you're somewhere far away. I want you to know that, that you don't need to give up tonight, and y'all here, you don't need to give up. That this might be your second week in recovery, Maybe you've got another six months to go or maybe eight months. But take this time in your life at this very moment that God has given you to get things right. Amen. Amen. Not just right with your family. Not just right with your past jobs or friends. But get things right with God because nothing is ever going to work right in your life until you make God first. Now you will search and you will run, you will hide. 
And you will do everything you can to please yourself, but you will never fill that void until you make Christ in your life first. So please just take that for what it's worth. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Dear Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this time that you have given us. Lord, we just ask that you will intervene in somebody's life tonight. Lord, maybe there's somebody here that's maybe holding on and they just want to accept you, Lord. And maybe tonight be the night where they leave here a free, a changed person in clean, white as snow. And Lord, we just thank you for your presence here tonight. Lord, we just pray and share a group that we will have a good group tonight. And Lord, I still ask you to be with my wife um, and just touch her and be with Karen, Lord, and and um, just go through her household and have things cleaned up and a speedy uh, recovery on that. And Lord, we just pray for the ones here tonight that you will bless them and their needs and give them what they need and not what they want. Lord, we just give them everything that you know they need. And Lord, we just thank you. We love you. We praise you. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. 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 I gotta throw in. I love y'all. I'll be back, bro. Hey, Tim. Um, yeah, what's that? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay. Just us, folks. You want to go in there? Whatever y'all want to do.